you guys. Well, well, well. Now guys, before we start off today's video, I need to make it perfectly clear. I had no, and I mean no intention of doing another one of these videos again so soon. For obvious reasons, I do not subscribe to the YouTube channel Brightside, so I do not keep up to date with whatever nonsense they're up to at any given time. However, that doesn't stop a good number of you in my Discord server, for reasons that I cannot imagine, for, from keeping an eye on them. And whenever they do something completely outrageous, you guys are very quick to let me know about it in my Discord. I wonder why. Oh, and if you would like to join my Discord, please click the link in the description below. We would love to have you. Anyway, last week, apparently Brightside uploaded another Titanic video. And this is what got my Discord server in a frenzy. When they noticed the video go up, they started flooding me with messages telling me that they wanted me to review it. This Brightside video, which I have not watched yet, apparently promises all of us new insights into the story of the RMS Titanic sharing information with all of us that we never knew before. And apparently it changes our whole understanding about what really happened to the Titanic on the night that it sank. Now, being someone who has studied the Titanic, I for one am very skeptical of this. Also due to the fact that Brightside's track record isn't exactly the greatest, if you know what I'm talking about. If you would like to watch my past Brightside review videos, please click the link in the description below. I've got a playlist that's got all the videos, so check it out. But yeah, so apparently all of you in my Discord server want me to review this new Brightside Titanic video, and all right, we're gonna do it. So join me today as we check out yet another Brightside Titanic review video. I hope you enjoy. <music> Hey everybody all right so once again welcome back to my office and you should be able to see my screen up here in the top corner in three two one go all right so this right here is the video that everyone in my discord was freaking out about titanic's captain failed his exam in navigation oh really is that so so all right so Here's the thing. I don't know if Captain Smith passed or failed any navigation exams early in his career, but even if he did, so what? Do you really think the White Star Line would have employed him on ships if he wasn't good at like being a navigator and knowing how to operate ships, you know? He was known as the millionaire's captain for a reason, because people trusted him. How do you think people trusted him? From doing his job and doing it well. I mean, just, and even if he did fail a navigation to them, it in no way impacts or impacted what happened on the night that the Titanic sank. I mean, seriously, I mean, he did everything he could to the best of his ability. So we'll see where they go with that. But once again, it's total garbage. And once again, they've got the Titanic sinking backwards, I see. Uh, they did get the breakup area actually in the more or less correct area. Just the Titanic is sinking in the wrong direction. Uh, okay, uh, here we go again. Uh, I've got it already pulled up here in another tab, so uh, we're going to watch this together. What the heck is this? Bright, side, bright Ideas Die Cut Sticker. Oh, crap. Does Brightside have merchandise? Of course they do. Of course they have merchandise. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to look at it. We're not going to, we're going to ignore that that's a thing. So uh, anyway. All right, guys. So without any further ado, let's watch this, what I'm sure will be insightful Titanic video. Whoa. The cause of the Titanic crash was an iceberg, or so we've always been told. But new research has come to light that debunks this theory. Seven seconds. Seven seconds. And... <laughs> what in the... <laughs> Okay, um, so the Titanic was steaming towards an iceberg and a Kraken was chasing it, huh? Is that what we're going with? <sighs> On April 15th, 1915, Titanic. You got the date wrong. You got the freaking date wrong. April 15th, 1915. Do you guys not check 
anything? Like, what the... <laughs> Uh, family friendly, family, family, family friendly channel, Sam, family friendly channel. And also, why is the Titanic sinking backwards again? You've got the way the Titanic sank more or less, right? Like, just like the way she went down on more or less an even keel and everything. But it's backwards. You've got it sinking stern first. And the, the, just the... Uh... Although I will say this. Uh, from what I've seen so far, this animation of Titanic, like, the way they have the ship actually animated, like, the way the ship looks, okay, not anything else. This is actually the best Titanic model animation I've ever seen from Brightside, so, uh, while that's not saying a lot, I feel like I should say at least one thing positive, but that's not much. But anyway, uh, we're 11 seconds in, and I've got 3 minutes and 46 seconds of video. This is gonna be great! Uh, the biggest ship of its time completely disappeared under the ice-cold surface of the Atlantic Ocean. It's hard to believe that such a massive and expensive creation could be destroyed by one simple iceberg, right? Well, recent findings suggest that the real cause of this... <gasps> what?! <laughs> what is this?! Are they... <laughs> For over three decades... Are they about to go into the coal fire thing? And is that their idea of the coal fire? What the? <laughs> oh, voice crack. <laughs> okay, I can see why my Discord was freaking out, but... <laughs> I'm pretty sure passengers would have talked about it if the Titanic had burst into flames like that. <laughs> Journalist Sinan Maloney has dedicated himself to studying the sinking of the Titanic. I've never heard of him. But based on what happened earlier, I'm going to assume this is the guy who came up with the coal fire thing, but I don't know. During his research, he made a significant discovery that shed new light on the well-known story. Molony discovered a massive black spot on the hull of the Titanic, uh -huh. which measured an impressive 30 feet in length. He found it thanks to an unpublished album of photographs that showcased the construction right. and preparation. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Be right back. Be right back. A few moments later. Okay, so I went to go get my Titanic model, okay? So, for those of you who don't know, alright, because this, I know this is what they're going to talk about here, alright? While the Titanic was at sea, on her maiden voyage, there was a coal fire on board, okay? Now, the Titanic, just like all ships during this time period, operated on coal. You know, they used coal for fuel and all that. And occasionally, coal fires broke out. And a coal fire happens when the coal that's still inside its coal bunker and not being fed to the boiler catches fire, all right? The Titanic had one of those fires on board. And it was in the aftmost uh, coal bunker of boiler room number six. So the coal fire was burning somewhere around here, just after the first funnel, roughly in this area. That's where the uh, coal fire was, more or less, okay? The Titanic's crew knew about the coal fire, okay? They knew that it was there and everything, but they decided that it did not play a big factor. You know, it wasn't a danger and everything. They knew how to deal with them, and they were actually working on putting the fire out throughout the entire time the Titanic was at sea, okay? So they actually got it out the day before the sinking. So anyway, so the coal fire was real, but so here, let, let's jump back to the video for a second. I'm going to show you guys this image. So right here, okay, this coal fire conspiracy and i'll explain more what it there's this coal fire conspiracy basically people think that the coal fire damaged the titanic's hull so bad that it's what allowed the iceberg to sink the ship they like to say that oh if this fire hadn't happened then the titanic's hull could have withstood the iceberg impact and they like to use this photo you see right here as uh quote unquote proof that the fire damaged the titanic so do you see this, uh, where's my mouse? Do you see this black mark right here, okay? They like to say that this black mark is evidence that the coal fire damaged the Titanic's hull. Only one problem. This black mark isn't where the fire was. That black mark is actually underneath the Titanic's forward well deck. And you know what's in there? Cargo holds. Nothing in there was on fire. The fire was a lot further back. So, I mean, that black smudge had nothing to do with the coal fire nothing most likely it was just a smudge on the camera 
And I mean, it's just if they would take two seconds to look into this, and I mean, and they would discover that it's a problem, like like that it can't be a true thing. The coal fire had nothing to do with damaging the Titanic's hull and allowing the ship to sink faster or get the, uh, I'm sorry, weaken the hull to allow the iceberg to damage the Titanic. Now, to be fair, the Titanic did hit the um, iceberg in an area where the coal fire was. And where these people like to say that the coal fire damaged the hull so much that it allowed the Titanic to sink. Well, as I said earlier, the coal fire was right around here, just after the first funnel, okay? When the Titanic struck the berg, the area from the front of the ship to just aft of the first funnel. All of this space had a bunch of small gashes in it from the iceberg impact. So do you see what I'm talking about here? All this space that had nothing to do with the fire and, and the metal there was unaffected by it was damaged, okay? The area where the fire was also got damaged by the iceberg, but again, the damage there was no more significant than the damage anywhere else. Coal fire was no big deal. It in no way impacted the way the Titanic sank and everything. Well, okay. Technically, the coal fire did do something with the sinking of the Titanic. However, I'm not going to be talking about that here. I did make an entire video on it. If you do want to watch that video, I'll include a link to it in the description below. Just a uh, fair warning, it's one of my early videos, so my editing quality is not what it is now, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, so uh, the coal fire theory, it's nonsense. It did play a role, but it did not cause the ship to sink. In fact, the coal fire actually saved lives. And if you want to know more about it, watch that video in the description below. Okay, that long-winded explanation is now out of the way. Let's get back to it. Uh. Spot on the hull of the Titanic, which measured an impressive 30 feet in length. He found it thanks to an unpublished album of photographs that showcased the construction and preparation of the ill-fated ship's first and final journey. Can you believe that most probably the fire on the Titanic had been burning at extreme temperatures? For that is not what happened! <laughs> what the heck is this? You really think the Titanic could sail if it was like that? I mean... Was... Three whole weeks before anyone noticed it. Wait, what? Crazy. What'd they say? Ill fated ship's first and final journey. Can you believe that most probably the fire on the Titanic had been burning at extreme temperatures for three whole weeks before anyone noticed it? Three weeks? I thought the fire started in Southampton. I thought it started like right around then when the ship left Southampton. I don't think it was burning when the ship was in Belfast or anything. I'm like 90% certain it started in Southampton, but double check me in the description below. Crazy, right? That has got to be the most unsettling image I have ever seen in my entire life. So did somebody take... Uh, 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 and why is there a cruise ship here? Apparently, the high temperature corrupted the metal, making it 75%. That's not where the fire was. That's why the iceberg was able to make a hole in the ship. Ah, Jiminy Christmas. If not for the fire, the Titanic might have survived the crash because the iceberg apparently hit the exact spot we are talking about. And this is only one link in the chain of incredible coincidences that brought the Titanic down. The people in charge of the Titanic knew about the fire. Who the heck are they? I don't think, I've never seen these people in anything White Star Line or anything. I'm, I'm assuming, unless these people are part of IMM or something like that, uh, I I don't think these people have anything to do with uh, Titanic. I think this is just a stock image. They do that a lot. I knew this shit about. <sighs> and this is only one more in the chain of incredible it. coincidences that brought the Titanic down. The people in charge of the Titanic knew about the fire and knew the ship shouldn't have set sail. It didn't play a role. It wasn't a big deal. Ugh. But they didn't want to go bankrupt and cancel the trip. They wouldn't have gone bankrupt if they had to cancel the trip. Things happen. Things go wrong. Ugh. Especially since there was a coal shortage due to miners being on strike. Holy crap. They actually got something right. There, in fact, was a coal shortage at the time of Titanic's maiden voyage because there was a coal miner strike. Good job, right, son? You actually got something right. Uh, it's a lifesaver, but still. Here's a Scooby snack, right, side. <laughs> the trip was already sold out. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> How long did we go there before I had to pause again? All of one second. 
So we're 12 minutes in and 12 minutes of video I've recorded and we're one minute and 43 seconds into the Brian Seven video. Okay, FYI, the Titanic was not sold out. It was actually notoriously underbooked. It was underbooked for the maiden voyage. So even if they did have to cancel the Titanic's maiden voyage, it would have looked bad for the White Star Line, but it certainly wouldn't have made the company go bankrupt or any other nonsense they're spewing and and there were no alternatives. Other ships canceled their trips due to low demand. Everyone wanted to board the Titanic. Hmm. Okay. So here's what really happened, okay? There was a coal, coal miner strike, as I stated earlier. That was real and everything. But the coal strike had actually been resolved shortly before the Titanic's main voyage, and the miners were getting back to work. However, since production of, of coal had just started again, there still was a coal shortage, okay? Now, the White Star Line did not want to cancel the Titanic's maiden voyage due to a coal shortage, all right? So what they did was they negotiated deals with other ships to have those ships give their coal to Titanic, and they took those other ships' passengers and put them on Titanic to help out with the Titanic's notoriously underbooking. So there was a good number of people that weren't supposed to be on Titanic that were due to the coal shortage and everything. And it certainly wasn't because the entire world wanted to board Titanic. I hate to tell you this, Brightside, but believe it or not, no one cared about the Titanic at the time of her maiden voyage. Titanic was old news. You see, there was this class of liner called the Olympic class bright side. The Olympic class was made up of three ships, Olympic, Titanic, and even though it wasn't complete at the time, Britannic. The world was fascinated with the Olympic, which was the first ship of the Olympic class. Titanic was seen as just a replica of the Olympic, you know? The only reason the Titanic was the biggest ship in the world at the time was because she was heavier. But Olympic and Titanic were essentially the same ship, at least on the outside. So as far as the public was concerned, the Titanic was old news. You know, no one really cared about Titanic before she sank. There weren't mobs of people, you know, celebrating and cheering as the ship left. I mean, there were definitely people watching the ship leave, but it's not like the entire world wanted to board Titanic. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. <sighs> I'm ranting, aren't I? I'm tired. I need a drink. A drink of tea, don't twist that around into alcohol or anything. I don't drink, so, okay. Anyway. So the management bought up all the coal they could find, even from other ships, and set off. It was all about making money. <laughs> so, I'm glad I already explained all this earlier, so I don't have to explain all that again. But, uh, while it was true the White Star Line wanted to make money, you really don't think they cared about people's safety, you know? I mean, uh, why are these White Star Line people, they look like gangsters to me. Like, uh, like 1930s or like, uh, I'm getting like Al Capone vibes from these guys for some reason. Uh, anyway. To hide the truth, they turned the ship's hull so that the marks weren't visible from the dock and faced the sea. What the? This way. <laughs> what? 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 Uh, what, what? Where the? <laughs> um, that's the way out of Southampton. <laughs> the way the Titanic was positioned. Uh, what's that old computer joke? Sam.exe has stopped working. <laughs> the passengers wouldn't see them. Here's another sad twist in the Titanic story. Back then, there weren't any sonar systems to detect danger, so specially trained people had to- Really? In 1912, they didn't have sonar. Really? Watch out for threats using binoculars. But the binoculars on the Titanic were locked away in a special compartment, oh and the only person with the key, second officer David Blair- Holy crap, they actually got David- Wait, no. Yeah, well, yeah, it was there. Was replaced last minute before the ship took off. He forgot to hand the key over to his replacement. This mistake wasn't discovered until three days later when the ship was already at sea. If they had the binoculars, they might have seen the iceberg in time and avoided the crash. 
No, they wouldn't have. As I've said a thousand times, binoculars don't help out when you're trying to look for something at night. If you're looking through binoculars at a black horizon, guess what you see? More black. I mean, like, I mean, they don't help out at all. <sighs> so here's another prime example of taking something true that happened. You know, David Blair accidentally uh, took the key with him and twisting it around into something fictional. So. But even if they had the binoculars, they might not have been able to avoid the crash because the Titanic was going faster than it was supposed to. Oh my gosh. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So the Titanic got the ice warnings, at least most of them. Most of them were delivered to the bridge and everything. There were some that weren't. But the weather around where the Titanic was operating, well, it looked perfect. It looked like you could see for miles around in all directions. So Captain Smith decided to keep the Titanic going at its current speed of 21, 22 knots, roughly right around there, because they thought they could see icebergs long before they posed a risk to the ship. And then if they saw ice they would slow down. They didn't see the need to slow down if it looked like they could see for miles around and any threats they could ID long before it became an issue to the Titanic. They didn't know about the mirage and all that other stuff. Ugh. All right, two minutes and 50 seconds. Behind schedule and didn't want to ruin the ship's reputation. It wasn't behind schedule. It was doing fine. So they were going way beyond the speed limits the ship's construction could sustain. No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, it wasn't at all. The Titanic was actually operating at near maximum steam pressure. They weren't exceeding anything. And uh, <laughs> Boiler Room 1 wasn't even lit. And also, what's up with these propellers? <laughs> uh, the Titanic's, uh, these screws here were three blade. And while it's often debated, you know, it's a debated topic. They, were, they talk about was the center blade three or four blade. Um, I think it was three blade. I don't think the Titanic had any four blade propellers. Uh, <sighs> One of the biggest mistakes made on the Titanic was the decision to not include enough lifeboats. Even though the ship needed around 60 of them to contain all the passengers, That's it was accurate. only equipped with 20. The designer, Alexander Carlyle. Uh, hold on a second. Is that, uh... I think that's Alexander Carlyle, just edited really badly. Uh, <laughs> okay, hang on, I gotta rewind, I gotta rewind. Okay, hang on, that, that Alexander Carlyle thing like really messed with me. Was the decision to not include enough lifeboats. <sighs> Even though the ship needed around 60 of them to contain all the passengers, it was only equipped with 20. The designer, Alexander Carlyle, had initially planned for 48 lifeboats. But this number was reduced for aesthetic purposes. Apparently, having too many lifeboats would have made the deck look too cluttered. These 20 boats were only able to hold a third of the passengers on board. Okay, so, here's the thing. Alexander Carlyle did argue about putting more lifeboats on Titanic. That is historically accurate. And depending on which sources you use, um, eventually Alexander Carlyle left uh, Harlan and Wolf. And they like to say that uh, supposedly it was partially due to the fact that uh, William Peary uh, refused to put enough lifeboats on Titanic and Alexander Carlisle disagreed. He was like, the regulations are out of date and everything because William Peary would want to go by the regulations. But what you have to understand is, is that back in 1912, lifeboats weren't seen in the same means as we see them today, you know? They, were, they weren't seen as a means to evacuate an entire ship's population. They were simply means to... The whole idea was that in the busy shipping lanes of the North Atlantic, there would always be another ship close by to go to the aid of another ship if a disaster came up. So what they wanted was just to have enough lifeboats that it would be efficient to ferry people from a damaged ship to a rescue ship that came by to help out. That was the main reason why the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats for everybody on board is simply because no ships at the time carried enough lifeboats for everybody on board. They weren't seen in the same way that we see them now. And I've heard the whole, they didn't want to put enough lifeboats on board for aesthetic reasons. I don't know if that's true or not. I believe they mentioned that in the James Cameron film. 
But uh, I know Andrews wanted to have enough lifeboats. I know Carlisle wanted to have enough lifeboats. But, you know, ultimately they went with the regulations because lifeboats just weren't thought of in the same way as we think of them now. And that's why they did that, even though Andrews and Carlisle disagreed. But anyway, so. Which was not nearly enough to save everyone in the event of an emergency. What's even more shocking is that this number of lifeboats was technically legal at the time. Regulations for lifeboats were based on the tonnage of the ship, not the number of passengers. This means that even though the Titanic was carrying thousands of people, it still met the legal requirements for lifeboat capacity. Another serious mistake made by the crew was the- Now, don't quote me on this, but I am pretty sure that the ship, I think they are right. I think it was based on the tonnage of the vessel and any ship exceeding a certain amount of tonnage had to have this many boats. But I think those regulations were really old at the time of Titanic. And when they were written, ships like the Titanic size weren't even, you know, thought of yet. And so, yeah, I think that's why the ship had the number of lifeboats that it did, was it did meet the regulations based on, you know, what the law said that they had to have based on a certain amount of tonnage, but the Titanic far exceeded it and they hadn't updated it yet, I think think. I haven't looked into that in a long time, so double check me in the comments if I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. The decision to cancel the lifeboat drill scheduled for the day of the disaster. Oh my gosh. Lifeboat drills were standard practice. There were reasons. Hang on, let me, let me uh, okay. Yes, they did cancel a lifeboat drill on Sunday that they were supposed to have, but there were reasons. Number one, they had a lifeboat drill while the ship was in Southampton. And number two, the Titanic was actually operating very efficiently. The engines were being broken in, the ship was making good time. And, you know, there were reasons why they didn't do it because it's fairly complicated to stop a steamship, get the steamship going again, like it's a process. And when you're breaking in new engines, you don't wanna do it. It would have disrupted uh, church services that were going on. And the fact that they already did a drill in Southampton, they just didn't think they needed to do it. <sighs> we're not even halfway on ocean liners at the time, but for no apparent reason, Captain Edward John Smith chose to cancel it. This meant that passengers were not prepared for an emergency, and the crew was not adequately trained to handle the situation. When the ship hit the iceberg... What in the actual... <laughs> what in the Okay, uh, you know why they canceled it. This is all not true. So, uh, and I don't, the passengers wouldn't have even been involved with the drill. It would have just been the crew. Chaos ensued, and it took over half an hour to launch the lifeboats instead of the usual 10 minutes. What? <laughs> what? No! The first lifeboat left the Titanic an hour after the collision, which actually sounds worse than what they said. But here's the thing. They had to be sure that the Titanic was in trouble before they did it. You have to remember the Titanic, like everybody on board the ship, I mean, it was, everybody was asleep for the most part, you know? So before they go and they start waking up passengers and putting them in lifeboats, which evacuating a ship in the middle of the Atlantic is dangerous. They don't want to do it unless they have to. So they spent a good chunk of time checking out the damage to see if an evacuation was necessary. And then while they were doing that, they were working on prepping the boats. It, their, the delay in launching the boats had nothing to do with the fact that the crew didn't know what they were doing. How much have I vented? I've got to say, this is... I feel like I don't normally vent this much. I feel like this is probably one of their worst yet. Uh, I feel like I'm talking a lot more than I normally do. Some folks put the blame on Captain Smith for the fact that the first set of lifeboats left partially empty. The very first lifeboat, which had seats for 65 people, only carried 27 passengers. They're so, ignoring that awful animation of the ship sinking in the background, I don't remember the exact number of people that were on board the first lifeboat. But I know that there were several reasons why there wasn't a lot of people in it. Number one, people didn't know the ship was sinking. Number two, they were being kind of quiet about it and everything, and no one knew the true seriousness of the situation. The women didn't want to leave their husbands. Although it was Murdoch, so I think he did let some men into that boat. I'd have to double check some stuff, but uh, yeah, this isn't, this isn't right, but anyway. There is an objective reason for this. 
At the beginning, people were reluctant to abandon the ship hey. and didn't understand the gravity of their situation. Okay. In 2012, researchers uncovered that Captain Smith failed his initial navigation exam. Although he eventually passed, some people wonder if this could have played a role in the disaster. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> now we know uh, what I talked about at the beginning of the video. That's what they're talking about. So I don't know if he passed or failed a navigation exam at the beginning of his career. But again, so what? He had an entire lifetime, or like uh, his, his, he spent his entire career on ships. You really think that if he couldn't operate a vessel, the White Star Line would put him in charge of their ship? He was known as a millionaire's captain for a reason. Can I get a, if you're watching this when it's premiering, can I get an F in chat, please? <laughs> if, if you play games, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm dying. Master. During the Titanic's final moments, the crew attempted to send out distress signals to nearby ships, including the California. What the heck was that? <laughs> Were those the distress rockets? Um, they weren't launching them in the final moments. They were actually launching them earlier in the sinking. I forget what time the last rocket went up, but they were launching one rocket every five minutes uh, for like an hour in the disaster. I'm pretty sure the last rocket went up somewhere between 1.45 and 2 a.m. right around there. Double check me, but... Uh, uh. Yeah. However, the Californian failed to respond to the flares shot into the sky, and the captain ultimately lost his job as a result of this negligence. <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, the Californian didn't respond. Uh, they were... It's not like they ignored the Titanic. They did say they just didn't know what was going on. They didn't understand what was happening. That's what happened with the Californian. Um... I think, yeah, I think Stanley Lord did get fired. I forget exactly. I know there was an inquiry, and they did say that the Californian, you know, could have responded to Titanic and everything. Stanley Lord did get called out for that. I think he did get let go for a bit, but I think he re I think he worked on ships later on, you know, because, I mean, it's just... The Californian, it's not like they saw the Titanic sinking and thought we're not going to help. You know, they just didn't understand what was going on. But can like can we just talk about how awful this sinking animation yeah. is right here? However, the Californian failed Titanic sinking backwards to respond to the flares and... shot into the sky, and the captain ultimately lost his job as Ugh. a result of this negligence. However, recent research has exonerated the captain and proved his innocence. Uh, it turns out that light refraction caused by layers of cold air below warmer air created mirages that distorted the signals from the Titanic. This phenomenon had been observed by other ships sailing in the... They actually got the cold water mirage thing in here. Holy crap. And that's kind of accurate. I mean, they the mirage did distort the light. There's no question about that. But the Californian people did see the rockets. But the Titanic also wasn't launching the rockets in the correct means. So there's, there's a lot to that. The area, and is now believed to be the reason why the lookouts on the Titanic missed the iceberg completely. Historian Tim Malton supports this theory and has further contributed to our understanding. They actually got the Mirage thing right. Holy crap. The Mirage did play a big role, and it is most likely the reason why the, the, the lookouts didn't see the berg until it was too late. Wow, they actually got that right. Of this event. It's unfortunate that the captain of the California lost his job due to circumstances beyond his control. <sighs> Here's the thing. The captain of the Californian, he just didn't do enough i don't blame him for the sinking of titanic or anything and i don't i don't think he's an evil man or anything he didn't ignore the titanic he's just guilty of not doing enough you know when you see something odd when in doubt go check it out you know because the california's crew was reported there was a ship it was acting weird it was shooting up rockets he stanley lord did order the uh, california's crew to signal the ship with the morse lamp but due to the mirage effect it was distorting the light from the morse lamp the titanic didn't know what was going on and the california's crew didn't know what was going on the california's radio operator had went to bed <sighs> you know just when in doubt double check you know because there was weird stuff happening just go wake up the wireless guy stanley lord you know that that's what i say he wasn't a bad guy he just didn't do enough on the night the titanic sang that's my two cents but it's better late than never that his reputation is cleared. Whatever the reason for Titanic's crash was, it still keeps the minds of science. These faces, like these pictures they use, and why are you? Just busy to this day. But let's see what the buzz was all about. 
What ma I'm really tired of watching the Titanic sinking backwards. What made the Titanic so famous and unique? The Titanic was massive, standing at 175 feet tall and nearly 900 feet long. The ship was so enormous that even the officers took over two weeks to memorize all the decks. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure Lightoller said that. You could be walking miles along its corridors. The construction cost of the ship was a whopping seven million five hundred thousand dollars, which would be equivalent to about one hundred sixty-six million dollars in the mid two thousand ten ES. Was that how much the Titanic cost back then? I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure how much it cost to build the Titanic. Due to inflation. Interestingly, the production cost of the Titanic movie in 1997 was even higher at $200 million. Building the Titanic was no small feat. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure how much the Titanic cost to build. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was like around a million, a million five, one million five hundred thousand in 1912, but I could be wrong, like in 1912 currency, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, and the James Cameron film was very, very expensive. And it required a labor force of 3,000 men who worked six days a week for 26 months. The job was difficult and dangerous, and workers had to complete tasks at the height of a 20-story building without safety ropes. Nevertheless, they were paid a competitive wage of two pounds a week, which was considered good pay at the time. The inside of the- I'm not, I'm not sure about all the facts about like how much they got paid and everything like that. Although I do know that the riveters, you know, the guys who were hammering the rivets into the Titanic's hull, I know they got paid um, based on how many rivets they hammered in, so. The Titanic was inspired by the luxurious Ritz Hotel in London. The most impressive feature of the ship's interior was the grand staircase, which extended through seven of the ship's 10 decks. FYI, these are pictures of Olympic. There are no known photographs of the Titanic's grand staircase. Just FYI. The staircase was adorned with ornate paintings, bronze cherubs, and oak paneling. The first class path. Were there paintings on the grand staircase? I didn't think there were. There might have been one over on the wall, like uh, facing the stairs, like on the opposite side of the stairs. I feel like I saw that in like one of Titanic on our glories animations, but I didn't think they had paintings on the walls. Passengers had access to an impressive array of facilities, including a heated swimming pool, Turkish bath, gym, squash court, beauty salon, and even a stylist to help them prepare for dinner. A first class- Was there a beauty salon? I'm not sure. Passengers on the Titanic were pampered to an extraordinary extent. They had their own onboard newspaper, the Atlantic Daily Bulletin, and even their dogs were taken care of with a special area where they could be fed, walked, and trained during the voyage. The first class meals were a grand affair, with 13 cor- That's not what the Titanic's first class dining room looked like, but okay. Courses and a different wine for each course. That looks like a modern cruise These ship. dinners could last up to five hours, and they were certainly something to look forward to. With such opulence and luxury on board, it's not surprising that so many people were eager to take the first uh, <laughs> Really, there was a full moon on the night the Titanic sank, huh? Trip on the Titanic. Okay. Well, thank God that's over. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that is one of the worst bright side videos I have ever seen to date. And considering how many of these videos I have watched for you guys by now, I think that's saying a lot. You know, I feel like I've vented a lot more in this video than what I have in past videos. So, uh, but yeah, in conclusion, is Brightside awful? Yes. Should you watch them? No. Even though they got some details about the true story of Titanic correct, it was hidden by all this fake bullcrap garbage that they keep spewing that it, they just, it, it's the stuff they get right. Well, if you did watch this, you would get completely the wrong idea about it. They twist the truth, they get stuff wrong, and you cannot watch a Bright Side video and get an accurate portrayal of what happened with Titanic. In fact, it would make it worse. So yeah, don't watch Bright Side. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this channel. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure you leave it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. It really helps out a lot. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Special thanks to my Captain Level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you.